You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 27. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm your host Katie Wardrobe from midnightmusic.com.au, the place for music teachers to get the help they need with using technology in music education. It's also the home of the Midnight Music community where you can find music tech online courses, video tutorials, tips and personalised support. For more information about the community and a special offer for podcast listeners, go to midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Before we get into today's topic, I would love to give a shout out to a couple of teachers who were nice enough to leave some feedback for me on the podcast and also generally on my Facebook page, Midnight Music Facebook page as well. So the first one is a review from Heather Lovelace. Now, she actually did comment on actually in a Facebook group that I'm a part of called I Teach Music Technology and she left a lovely comment and she's followed up with a review for the podcast itself, which is titled Inspiration and Information in Every Episode. And she says, every episode, I feel like I'm meeting a new music tech hero. I find myself saying, wow, what a great idea as I'm driving to work, listening to Katie and the guest of the day. I scramble to the show notes to check out the links and to make notes and order the latest book. This is a treasure trove of knowledge and very well done. Thank you for helping me stay inspired and energized. So thank you so much, Heather. I really, really appreciate the review and it always makes me feel energised myself when I see other people comment uh, positively and it gives me that reason to keep going. So thank you so much for leaving the review. The other one was a lovely little comment on my Facebook page uh, from a teacher called Brian and he says, Hello, my mind is being blown with all the amazing sites, resources and lessons you have made available. I'm so excited for using much of this material in my teaching. Thank you. And I'm saying Thank you to you as well, Brian. So I really appreciate people taking the time to make comments like that. And as I mentioned, it does keep me motivated and energised to keep going with what I do. Now, today I want to talk about some of the best free music tech resources which are available to music educators. And this kind of stemmed from 2009 when I ran my first music technology on a shoestring workshop at a conference in Melbourne, Australia, where I live, and I presented a number of free resources there. I sort of picked the topic thinking that that it would probably be a good one, and it turned out to be a really popular session, so it was a, a packed room on that day, I think. And over time, I've collected more and more of these free resources and I ended up creating a PDF guide, which I called the Ultimate Free Music Tech Resources Guide. Now, I've, I've actually ended up updating this on an annual basis and I've just released the sixth one. So it's been going since 2012 and the latest one has just come out now in 2017. I thought today that I'd talk about the types of things that I've included in that guide, share some of my favourite resources and talk a little bit about how things have changed since I first released it. I made the decision to actually update it annually because things do change over time and you know things disappear unfortunately from time to time I've had a few of my favorite you know websites on um, musical creativity type websites have just simply disappeared and I've logged in one day to go and use it at a workshop or for myself and found that it's not there anymore so I did have to find that I update the the guide um, on an annual basis and move things on and also add new things in that I've discovered over the year. So a few things to note before I get into the details of this year's guide and the first one is that I'm going to say that free resources are fantastic but they are definitely not everything. So some of the free resources in this guide have optional paid upgrades and they unlock extra features or levels or services or just extra aspects to using that online service and I really highly recommend upgrading to the paid option if your budget allows it and you're fine finding that tool really useful. Um, One of the main things about paying for a service as opposed to using its free version is that often 
the classroom management and student management when you're using that tool becomes a lot easier when you're using the paid option. So sometimes you might find you can set up a free account and students can set up a free account to use something, um, but you're all kind of working separately. But as soon as you, as a teacher, set up a paid account and give your access, um, ex- students access through your account, you can then much more easily manage all of their work. So not everything that I'm talking about today is like that, but there are just a couple which are. And so I just wanted to mention that really it is great. If you can consider the paid option, do that. However, if you are on a really tight budget and this is your only option, then of course use the free version. A lot of these free resources are either websites or downloadable software. And, you know, if you are on that tight budget, they're great for dipping your toe in the water into using more technology or perhaps if you just want to present a topic or a concept in a different way to what you've been doing in the past, technology can help in that that regard. Now, the resources that I'm going to share from this year's guide, the 2017 guide, they're mainly web-based and there are some downloadable software programs for Macs and PCs. Now, many of those web-based resources will also work on iPads and Android devices and Chromebooks, but they are not necessarily specifically designed for those things. And at some time in the future, I'm actually planning to do a separate guide altogether, which is free iPad and Android apps. Working on that one, it's going to take a little while to put that together. I've got a a list at the moment and I'm going to need to just go through everything I've got and revise it all and add in some new things again that I've discovered recently and I'm hoping to get that done sometime later this year. Now before we go on, I want to make sure that I give you the link where you can download your own copy of this year's free Music Tech Resources Guide. I'm going to mention quite a few of those resources in this episode and I don't want you to have to be scrambling to write them down. They're actually all in the guide with links that you can click through. So if you want to download a copy, you can go to the show notes page for this episode, which is midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 27 that's the episode number today and it's just the number 27 not written out in full and when you go to that page you'll see a download button and you can click on that enter your email address and the guide will be sent to your inbox i'll repeat that link at the end of the episode as well just in case you can't write it down or remember it right now So when I first put together this guide, it was, you know, quite a bit smaller than it is now. And that was, as I mentioned, in 2012. And as it grew, I ended up splitting things into categories. So I had sort of just a a general list of free tools at first. And then it grew so big that I thought, no, it really makes sense now to put them into categories. So over over the years, things have changed. I've added new things in and I'm up to around 22 pages, I think. And there are 19 different categories that these resources fall into. So some things were really straightforward. I've got categories that include things like note naming, so resources or tools or websites that help students learn names of notes. There's a category which is music theory resources, there's ear training, there's notation, music history, orchestral music and so on. So those were all pretty straightforward and it was easy to define, you know, which tool would go into which category. Some of my favourite resources across this first lot of categories include things like the Star Wars uh, software, which you can download for free from uh, the, the website that's in the guide. And Star Wars is a great sort of Star Wars themed um, piece of software which allows students to shoot notes on a staff. So a, a note will come out flying across the staff from the right hand side and you get to choose the letter name of that note and your spaceship will shoot the note if it's correct and if it's not correct you'll lose a life and you, you go on until you keep going until you die basically. So that's a great one. There's also a version of that software which allows you to play an instrument and instead of pressing a note on the screen or clicking a note on the screen, the letter name itself, you play the note on your instrument and it gets picked up through the microphone of the computer that you're using and basically the note will get identified that way, either correctly or incorrectly. So that's great software and that's been around since the beginning of me kind of working in this area. So I've been using that for a long time. Now over time they actually also added in an iPad app version, which is great. And there's an iPad app version for both the 
note identification version where you're tapping a letter on the screen and also one where you play your instrument into the microphone of the iPad. So do don't go and check those out. The, the app versions are actually paid ones, but the software you can still download for free. Other resources in this categ- these categories uh, include things like musictheory.net and Teoria, which are both music theory websites. They've been around for a long, long time and I know lots of you use those already. And once again, they're just great free resources. On both of those websites, they have some information like lesson uh, teaching type material and then they also have exercises that you can do. And you can customise exercises to a certain degree. So if you want your students to concentrate on specific things, you can set some things up on the website and get the students to use a special link to find that part that you've set up for them. I also love for notation category, uh, MuseScore, which has also been around for a long time, is a, a fantastic free notation program which you can download onto your Mac or your PC. And in this category too, NoteFlight and Flat.io, which are also notation options. Now, NoteFlight and Flat are both online notation options, whereas MuseScore is downloadable software. And NoteFlight and Flat are two examples of of that type of software where you can use it free to a certain extent, but if you go for the paid version, upgrade a little bit to the paid version, uh, you get a lot more access to things and um, to be able to manage student work and so on. So I do recommend just checking that out. Now, the next lot of categories in the guide include what I would term creative resources. And this includes things like recording and sequencing software or resources, things that allow you to create loops and patterns, uh, things that allow you to do remixing or arranging or composing, and even virtual instruments. Now, these are a little bit harder, I find, to, you know, to slot resources into these categories. And I I had a bit of a hard time coming up with separate categories. At first, I had everything in the one category and it was a little bit big and didn't quite describe everything in the one category. So I did split it up into these subcategories, if you like. And favourite websites in this area or resources are things like Incredibox, which again has been around for multiple years. And I've been showing it in workshops all of that time, and it's been really popular and successful with teachers. Uh, In more recent times, things like Groove Pizza, which is an online drum machine, and Aquertion, I'm hoping I'm saying it right, which is basically um, an online musical keyboard that you can play. And there's even uh, a, a way to embed a YouTube video of your choice, which you can then play along with. Now, the online keyboard in this one is even customizable. So you can choose to set the notes of the keyboard only to the pentatonic scale or to a Dorian mode or or something of your choosing. So there's some flexibility there and a little bit of control over what you do. Both of those tools have been um, created by NYU, New New York University, and they're doing some awesome things over there, really creative and useful for teachers. And so I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. But in recent times, they've been two of my favourite tools that have come out of there. Now, GarageBand and Soundtrap I've included in this category too. So GarageBand, um, it's on the borderline of being classed as free or not free, but basically if you buy a Mac, you get GarageBand included. So that's why I've, I've included it in the guide in the first place. And Soundtrap, again, is, is similar to GarageBand. It's an online version of a GarageBand type project, which allows you to do the same sorts of things like recording and using loops to create music and um, collaborating even with other people. So Soundtrap has that little different point of difference where you can collaborate online with other students who may or may not even be in your class they could be in another class or even in a different country altogether but I love both of those they're they're great flexible tools that you can do so much with so students might do songwriting or remixing or create covers and record them they can record rehearsal um, you know I was going to say tapes, that's not quite right, (laughs) rehearsal uh, tracks for themselves. They could uh, create examples of them playing or singing something that they've been assigned in class so that you can then assess it at a later stage. You can create podcasts, you can do in film scoring, uh, film scoring in GarageBand at least. Um, you could do a version of film scoring or video game composing in both of the tools too. So they're really great and fantastic and flexible options for use. 
Audacity is another one which, again, has been around for years and years. And I know in Australia, a lot of our schools put Audacity onto school laptops or desktop computers just as a matter of course because it's one of those things that can be used really in any subject. So Audacity is just a a really great, easy-to-use, basic audio editing tool. And it's, it's the thing that I actually use to record all of these podcasts in. So I hit record and I can record my voice. I could be recording myself singing or playing. You can really easily edit the audio that you've recorded by chopping bits out, splitting it up, removing mistakes. That's what I do with this podcast editing. You know, if I've left a gap or got too many ums and ahs, I do have the opportunity to go back in and remove them, which is great. And lots of, again, lots of projects you can use Audacity for with your students. So it could just be a recording, a straight up recording, or it could be a storytelling exercise, or again, creating their own podcast about something, doing some sort of verbal report or talking about a composition they've done and giving some feedback that way. So lots of flexibility with Audacity too. And I I just love it. I use it all the time. Um, Great tool. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news, and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Other things in this category along this sort of creative line are things like Isle of Tune, which if you haven't checked that out, it's quite difficult to describe verbally. Um, And it's a really different, strange way of looking at music. But basically, it's a, a place where you have an empty island and you build a road and you add a couple of trees or a lamppost and you drive a car along that piece of road. And as it drives past all of these things that you've added onto the side, it they each make a sound. So each lamppost is a percussive sound and the bushes are melodic sounds. And you can basically build up a tune and it's really great for creating ostinati. So you can build a little road, which is a drum beat ostinato or a melodic type ostinato and so on. And there are some great examples of other people's Isle of Tune creations, which you can have a look at for inspiration and maybe get your mind blown a little bit. There's a lot of time that goes into creating one of these. So I like this one. It's it's really different sort of way of looking at music. And I think it would really appeal to certain types of students, really. The other one I'll mention in this category, and, and I'm not talking through everything that I've got in this these uh, categories by any means. I've just handpicked a few to mention on the podcast today. But one of my other favourites in this area is Hookpad, which is a fantastic songwriting tool. And it allows students to work um, in a chordal type way. So you can build up a chord sequence, chord progression, and then students can, can compose a melody over the top. Now it has other areas of the website which are fantastic as well, including an area called Theory Tab, which allows you to um, basically build up a song based on chords and or, or build up a sequence based on chord names and actually find out which songs which exist already in the world, use that chord progression. So it's really good if you wanted to find songs which use the, um, you know, that sort of famous four chord pop song progression, which is one, five, six, four. Have I got that the right way around? I think so. Anyway, that one, (laughs) basically you can go to Theory tab and plug those chords in and it will show you a list of lots of songs which use that chord sequence in it. Might not be for the entire song, but at least for a portion of the song. And you can do some exploring around after chord one, if you were to start with that in the song, which is the next most popular chord 
uh, you know, in pop music, what would the choice be? And so that's a, a great way of looking at songwriting and um, doing some analysis of songs as well. And there's lots more you can do with it too. So a really great one to check out if you're doing songwriting with your students. Now, a couple of years ago in the guide, I started to include a collection of places to find images and sound effects and videos and music, existing music, which are legal for you to use. And the reason for doing this was that I was finding I was using all of those things a lot, all the time. So every time I write a blog post, I need an image to go with it. And if I make uh, keynote presentation files or PowerPoint presentation files, I need images to go in them. Sometimes I need music as well. If I'm making videos, I need intro and outro music. Uh, When doing film scoring projects, I need videos and sound effects and I just find I'm using these things all the time every day and I was thinking you know really teachers everywhere are using all of those things as well if you're creating your own worksheets or PowerPoint presentations for use in class or even if you've got a Teachers Pay Teachers store and you're making your own resources to sell there you need a lot of these what I call digital assets all the time so I decided to add those into the guide too and really they're not just for teachers of course they're for students to use when doing assignments as well because they need the same type of things too so lots of multimedia so I ended up um, including a few things so my favorite places to find free images that's one of the things that I've included and my top website that I go to most frequently uh, for say photos is called Pixabay P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, Pixabay, and they have some great public domain images on there that you can use, so some fantastic ones, and you can just search for music or instruments or audio or anything you like, really, and you're bound to find something that's useful there. They have an excellent area called Editor's Choice, I think it is, and if you go there, it's just a nice place to browse through beautiful images. You might actually be inspired by something there. A couple of other places I go to quite frequently are icon websites where you can download small icons and they're excellent for representing something in a really succinct way. Um, Two of my favourite ones are called Flat Icon and The Noun Project and I think I'm probably going to record a whole episode about finding images and how to use them and how to edit them and what you can do with images in a future podcast because there's so much you can do here and there's a few tricks I've learned over the years so I think I'll share those with you in a separate episode which will be a whole thing on itself. In addition to that I A few years ago, I ended up creating a collection of notation images. So I've also linked to that in the guide. And this is a collection of things like, you know, treble clef and bass clef and alto clef and tenor clef and notes like crotchets and quavers and, you know, joined up quavers and all sorts of things. I started to do a really simple collection of these that you could use in resources that you're making. Because again, I was finding I was needing them and I thought, well, I may as well share them with other people. And in the end, the library grew and grew and grew. And I think there's over 150 images in there now. So it ended up being quite big. But over the years, people have been, um, it's been really nice to see the feedback from that, um, that people have found it so useful uh, to use. I ended up making each of those images uh, with a transparent background. And once you start getting into using images a lot in your resources, you realize how useful it is to have a transparent background on an image and not a solid white background. So, for instance, if you were to use the treble clef out of my collection, you can drag it into a PowerPoint slide that has, say, a pink background on the slide, and the treble clef will just be the treble clef on its own. It won't have a white square around it. So, so transparent images are super useful. So that's that's what's in that notation library. And once again, if you get the the guide and download it, you'll see there's a link to that notation library. So if you want to download it yourself, you can do. There's also, um, separately to that, I created a guitar chord image library and a ukulele chord image library. Now, there's not every single guitar chord and ukulele chord in my libraries. I just did kind of the most popular chords. So I've had a few requests to add extra ones in, which I may do. It's a little bit of a... um, a little bit of a saga adding things into those libraries because it means that I have to go back and create the new images and then there's a whole rigmarole with 
putting the collection together in a zip file and uploading it and so on. But I will at some point, I'll collect up all the requests and I will do a, a revised version at some point in the future. So that's images. In addition, um, in those, you know, that category or that sort of area of digital assets, I've also got links to things like sound effects libraries, which I've found really useful over the years too. So uh, NASA, I've mentioned on a previous podcast episode that there's a collection of NASA sound effects, which are awesome. And there's a British library of sounds as well, which is super useful too. Now, other things in the guide I ended up including in more recent times are things like non-music resources, which sounds a little bit strange, but when I started the guide off, I had only really music-based websites. And after a time, I thought, no, it's really useful for people to find out and discover some of the general education technology resources that I have been using over the years as well. And a number of general ed tech resources really are adaptable to any subject area. And so they, they are super useful in music, especially if you're doing things with students um, in a digital format, like digital portfolios. Uh, there's multiple things that you can use to create a digital portfolio in the first place, but also to make all of the pieces that make up the digital portfolio too. So a more recent discovery or one that I've been using is called Adobe Spark. And that's a free online tool, which allows you to create images with a text overlay and you see these all the time floating around the internet these days either they're memes you know sort of jokes or they just might be a quote on an image background and if you've ever wanted to create your own versions of those and you're not quite sure how to Adobe Spark makes it really easy so I can highly recommend just giving that a go but of course you could use that with your students. Perhaps you might get them to choose their favourite line of lyrics from, you know, a song and they might make that into the, to the image. So they might uh, pick a line from the song and find an image that will kind of suit it, you know, go with that, that sentiment or the lyrics themselves and then put that text over the top and then they can change the format, the colour, the font that's used and so on. You can spend a lot of time fiddling around with that stuff, so maybe set a time limit, but it's lots of fun. Other things in this category along the lines of digital portfolio tools, uh, things like ThingLink, which is a way to create kind of like multimedia posters. Um, another one called VoiceThread, which has also been around a long time, which allows you to upload a video or an image and then you can have verbal feedback or comments about that image as well. One that I've been using a lot recently is Padlet. And again, this has been around a while. I didn't realize that it, it was the thing that used to be called Wallwisher, but now it's uh, called Padlet. And again, it's just so easy to use. It's basically an online virtual pin board where you can put text and videos and links and images and it's very flexible. Um, it's so flexible and I think there are so many ways that you could use it in the music classroom that again I'm going to probably do a whole separate episode just about Padlet. But the sorts of things you can do is to get students to brainstorm about a topic. So perhaps you might be considering, um, I don't know, choices for an upcoming concert and you could get students, students can actually log into your Padlet board that you've set up and they can add their own comments or links to videos or um, other information and, and so on. So you can collaborate really, really easily. They might even use uh, Padlet on their own. So perhaps they might be doing research on a specific topic. It could even be something like, you know, my favourite band or a solo artist and they could have a Padlet board around that person or artist and they could collect things which, you know, are links to, say, their Wikipedia page entry or YouTube videos of examples of that person playing or singing and historical things they can just add their own text so you could assign questions that they have to answer and they have to answer them in the Padlet board itself and so on but lots and lots of other suggestions for that too. Other things that I've included in this section uh, which again are non not really music specific are things to build a website with and once again this is a great way of having a digital portfolio and I talked about this with Richard McCready in a pre previous episode and he's using um, a website for his students to create their own portfolios of compositions that they do during the year. 
Now, I also have seen a number of teachers create websites which are just for their music department and they use them to either communicate information to parents and students about what's going on in that subject, but they may also share assignments there and students may also even upload work to that website. Not everybody does all of those things, but some great ones are places where they share assignments and so students can just go there and there's not really any excuse for losing instructions for things because it's on a website where you can just log in and find it. So I really love those. Um, Website builders that are great and easy, super simple to use, include Wix and Weebly, and both of those are great. WordPress is another option too, and WordPress um, has a lot more flexibility if you want to end up using it in a bigger way. So if you're starting a business website, I would head for that one. But, you know, all three of those are really great and easy to use. And the last thing that's in this kind of area is things like quiz tools. So I'm thinking things like Kahoot. I know a lot of you using Kahoot in the classroom, which is a game style quiz tool that you can set up your own quizzes in. And it's so much fun. Lots of very engaging. I recently (laughs) ran a workshop for some university students and I knew they all had seen Kahoot before. And I said, well, we don't need to run through that then. And they're like, no, no, we really want to play a Kahoot quiz. So we did one, even though they all knew how to use the website and had seen it before, we still ran through a quiz together because it's fun. (laughs) So that's a great one to use. Um, Other things like Plickers, which is uh, basically paper clickers. Great if you don't have many devices. Um, again, you can set up your own quizzes there and, and use that tool. Um, play Posit or Play Posit, I'm not sure if it's pronounced that way, is a great online video quiz tool. And there's another one which has lots of flexibility called Socrative. And all of those are not music specific, but perfect for use in the music classroom. So that's a few highlights of things that's in the guide. I have not talked through everything by any means. There are lots and lots and lots of things listed, which I haven't mentioned today. But if you would like to see that full list, you can go and download it, as I mentioned before. And the thing I get asked a lot is, you know, knowing about these resources is great, but what do I actually do with them in class? And this question particularly pops up in relation to some of those creative, interactive websites, things like Incredibox, which sometimes may seem to be novelty at first and perhaps not have a lot of educational value. But I find once you spend a bit of time with them, it's much easier to work out specific lessons, lesson ideas or find ways to fit them into units of work that you're already doing. So I ended up deciding, and I've had lesson plans going for a number of these over the years, which I've shared in workshops and online courses, but I've ended up deciding to pick a few of my free favourite sites and create a series of lesson plans just for those with walkthrough videos and teacher tips that will help you get the most out of each one. So the websites I'm going to do these for or have already started are Incredibox and Groove Pizza, Beepbox, which is one I didn't mention earlier. That's a video game composing tool. Isle of Tune, Hook Theory, Accordion, YouTube even, Adobe Spark and Padlet. And there'll probably be a couple of more as well. And I'm basically putting together lesson plans, which will mainly fit into a single lesson, but they'll have lead up activities and extensions in case you want to take them further and spend a bit more time on those. Now, all of these lesson plans are going into my online music tech community for teachers, which is called the Midnight Music Community. So if you're already a member, you'll actually have access to them as soon as I've uploaded them. And I'm doing that as as I complete each one. So there's a handful in there already and I'm going to be uploading them in the next few weeks. Now, if you're not a member and you'd like to join so that you can get access to those lessons, plus all the other stuff that's in there, there's actually hundreds of hours of training and resources and things. I've got that special offer for podcast listeners at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about all the free resources today. I will be choosing a few of them, as I mentioned, in upcoming episodes, and I'll go a little bit more in depth into each one and what you can do with them, lesson ideas for using them, and so on. 
So that's it for today. I am super excited about this year's guide and I really hope that you enjoy it if you go and download a copy. It was lots of fun to put together and already I have found that I have some extra things to add in. As soon as I publish one, of course, the next day pretty much you find out that there's something that you forgot or would like to include or discover new. So I will get on to next year's guide and and start the list for that one. But in the meantime, enjoy this one. There's plenty to to go on with. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode, including the ultimate free music tech resources guide download at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 27. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.